Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Shkanim. We are up to Perik Vav Mishnah Hey. Today's Mishnah should be Lelun Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aranbai, and Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Beganeden, Amen. This Mishnah describes the collection chest mentioned in Mishnah 1. Shelosha Asar Shofarot Ayu Bamikdash. There were 13 collection chests in the temple courtyard. The Chatuv Alehem and a label describing the purpose of the contents was written upon each of the chests. This is what was written. Tiklin Chatin v'tiklin Atikin. Number one, Nushkalim. And number two, Oshkalim. Kinin v'gozle Ola. Number three, bird pairs. And number four, young Ola birds. And the Mishnah will explain the difference between new and old Shkalim as well as the meaning of bird pairs and young Ola birds. It seemed number five, wood used to fuel the altar fire. Number six, olivona, frankincense, a type of incense burned on the golden altar. And number seven, zav lichforot, gold for service vessels. Now, if someone pledged a certain amount of gold to purchase a service vessel, he would place that amount of gold or coins of an equal value in the collection chest marked gold for service vessels. Similarly, anyone pledging to give wood or levonat to the temple would place the value pledged in the chest marked for that purpose. Shishalim Dava, number 8 through 13, the six remaining chests, Shkalim designated for voluntary communal offerings were deposited. Now there are five types of offerings whose surplus funds are used to pay for voluntary communal ola offerings, extra offerings brought on days when there were few offerings. These five offerings are number one, chatat, number two, asham, number three, bird pairs of zavim, zavot, and women who have given birth, number four, nazir offerings, and number five, the special asham of a mitzorah. A separate chest was established for the surplus funds of each of these offerings. If money was left over from the funds a person designated for buying one of these offerings, the owner would deposit that surplus in the appropriate chest marked surplus chatat or surplus asham. The sixth of these chests was for someone who wanted to donate money toward the purchase of voluntary communal offerings. It was marked simply donations. The Mishnah now explains the purposes of the first four chests. Tiklin chatin shebechol shana v'shana. New shkalim refers to the shkalim of each year, the shekel that each individual had to give that year. Vatikin mishelo shekal eshtakad shokel l'shana haba. And old shkalim are those of someone who did not bring a shekel during the previous year and who therefore gives an additional shekel during the coming year. This additional shekel was deposited in the chest marked old shkalim. These shkalim were then added to the remainder of the chamber fund, the shkalim remaining in the chamber from the previous year shkalim that we spoke about earlier in chapter 4, Mishnah 3, because they too are last year shkalim and would have been left over had they been paid on time. Now therefore, one collection box was for this year shkalim and one was for shkalim not paid in the previous year. Kinin hem torim v'gozle olahin b'neyona. Shkalim in the chest marked bird pairs were used to buy mature turtle doves and those in the chest marked young ola birds were used to buy young pigeons. The kulan olot and all of these turtle doves and pigeons were offered as voluntary personal ola offerings div rebi yuda. These are the words of rebi yuda. Now the Torah lists two types of birds that may be offered as an ola offering, a mature turtle dove or a young pigeon. As the Torah writes in Seva Vaikra chapter 1 Pasuk 14, a person vowing to bring a pair of bird offerings would deposit the value of the birds in the appropriate chest. Money for mature turtle doves was placed in the chest marked bird pairs, and money for young pigeons was placed in the chest marked young ola birds. According to Rabbi Uda, the collection chests were not used for obligatory bird pair offerings, namely the chatat and ola brought by a zav, a zava, a poor woman after childbirth, or a poor mitzorah. This was because chatat offerings were never bought with money deposited in chests because the person making the deposit might die before the coin had a chance to bring his offering. If that happened, the chatat bird would become unusable as would any chatat money not yet spent. And if those shkalim mingled with others in the chest, they would all become unusable. So to prevent such an occurrence, a person obligated to bring bird offerings would give either the birds or their value directly to the Kohen rather than depositing the money in a chest. But the sages say, The bird pair's chest was for people who were obligated to bring a pair of birds. Echad chatat vechad ola, one is a chatat and one is an ola. Now the sages are not concerned about the possibility that a depositor might die as Rabbi Yehuda is. Therefore the chest marked bird pairs was used to deposit shkalim for obligatory bird offerings. The money would have to be wrapped in a packet so that both the chatat and ola would be purchased from one person's money. As Tosfud writes on Psachim page 98. Vegozle ola kulan olot, but... 
all the offerings bought from funds that just mark young Ola birds are voluntary Ola offerings. Even funds for voluntary offerings of turtle doves were placed in this chest to make sure that the right kind of bird was used. The outside of each packet would state whether the money was to be used to purchase a turtle dove or a pigeon. So to summarize, the article elucidated in note 7 summarizes, according to the Biyuda, the difference between the two chests is that the bird pair's chest was used to collect money for offerings of mature turtle doves, while the young Ola bird's chest was used to collect money for offerings of young pigeons. Both, though, were brought as voluntary offerings. According to the sages, the difference was that the bird pair's chest was used for obligatory bird offerings, and the young Ola bird's chest was used for voluntary Ola offerings, regardless of the species. And that is in Rabotai of Mishnah Hey. We continue now with Mishnah Vav. The Mishnah Hey now listed separate collection chests for wood, levona, and gold for service vessels. Now, when a person vowed to give wood or one of the other items that we mentioned to the temple, he had the option of donating the wood itself or of contributing enough money to buy the wood. If he decides to give money, he places it in the appropriate chest and the Konim buy the wood for him. This Mishnah teaches how much a person must give if he vowed to contribute without stating an amount. If someone said, I hereby accept upon myself to contribute pieces of wood for the altar, he may not bring less than two blocks of wood. Since the word etzim, pieces of wood, is plural, he must bring at least two blocks of wood. However, a person also has the option of contributing a single block of wood by saying so explicitly in his vow. He or didn't. He said etzim, he has to bring no less than two, as large as those used on the altar. Each piece should be one amma square, and as thick as the standard stick used to level grain that was heaped on top of a se'ah measure. If he wishes to give money instead of bringing the wood, he must deposit enough money for those two blocks of wood in the chest marked wood. Livona, if he vowed to contribute the frankincense, Livona, lo ifchod mi kometz. He may not bring less than the kometz, which is the amount that fills the hollow form by bending the three middle fingers over the palm, which is the amount of Livona brought with the mincha offering. Now the Talmud learns out from Seba Vaikra, chapter 6, Pasuk 8, that the measure of Livona offered on the altar is a kometz based off the Gemara Mesech Menachot, Page 106b. If he wishes to give money, he places enough money to buy a comet, uh, the amount that fills the hollow form by bending the three middle fingers over the palm in the chest marked Levona. Zahav, if he vowed to contribute a gold coin, lo ifchod mi dinar zahav, he may not bring less than a gold dinar, the smallest gold coin. Now, since he vowed to contribute a gold coin without specifying a value, he may bring the smallest gold coin that there is, namely a gold dinar, which is worth 25 times as much as a silver dinar. If, however, he made no mention of a coin in the vow, he may bring much less, even the amount of gold it takes to make a small fork-shaped utensil, the smallest service vessel of gold used in the temple, is acceptable. The Mishnah quotes and explains now a line in the previous Mishnah dealing with the last six collection chests. Shisha Lindava in the six remaining chests, Shkalim designated for voluntary communal offerings were deposited. Nidava Meayosin Ba. What would they do with this money that was designated for voluntary offerings? Lokhin Bah Olot. They would buy extra communal Ola offerings with it. On days when there were few other offerings, these Ola offerings were placed on the altar after the other offerings had been brought so that the altar would always be in use. Now, Habasar Lashem Vaorot Lakonim, whose meat was offered on the altar to Hashem and whose hides were given to the Kohanim. The meat of an, an ola, any Ola offering is burnt on the altar, as it says in Seva Vaikra chapter 1, Pasuk 9, and its hides are given to the Kohanim, as it says in Seva Vaikra chapter 7, Pasuk 8. Now, the Mishnah brings a biblical source for using surplus chatat and Hashem money to buy Ola offerings. Of the six collection chests, five contain surplus funds, uh, funds of different offerings all of which are types of chatat or asham offerings. The six chests contain money that was donated initially for la offerings. The Mishnah says, Ze midrash rashi o yada kohen gadol. This following midrash of Seva Vaikar chapter 5, Pasuk 19, was expounded by Yoyada the kohen gadol to yield the above law. Now, Yoyada was a kohen gadol in the first temple during the reign of King Yehoash of Yehuda. Asham hu asham asham ladonai. After discussing one type of Hashem offering, the Hashem Talui, an Hashem brought by someone who is unsure whether he committed a sin for which a Chatat is brought, the Torah concludes it is an Hashem, for that which he has become guilty, he shall bring an Hashem to Hashem. It is an Hashem, 
implies, the Torah says, Asham who is an Asham. That implies that this Asham is treated like other Asham offerings whose meat is eaten by Kohanim. The end of the Pasuk says explicitly, however, Asham la Hashem. This is an Asham offering that goes to Hashem. So Yohiada resolved this contradiction by explaining that the Pasuk deals not with an actual Asham offering, but rather with an offering bought with the surplus funds of an Asham or any other of any other offering that atones for sin. If a sum of money was set aside to buy a Khatat or an Asham and the offering costs less than the amount he put aside for it, the leftover money is called surplus funds of that offering. So if you interpret it that way, this is the rule that Pasuk is saying. Any surplus funds that come from money set aside for a Khatat offering or for an Asham offering should be used to purchase Ola offerings. Whose meat is offered on the altar to Hashem and whose hides are given to the Kohanim. So in doing so, it comes out that the two psukim are upheld. Asham la Hashem. The end of the verse, he shall bring an Asham to Hashem, means at the meat of this Asham, the Ola that you offered, um, the Ola offering that you purchased with Asham funds goes to Hashem. The Asham la Kohanim, and the beginning of the Pesuk, it, it is an Asham, means that the hides go to the Kohanim like, any, like those of any other Asham. Since the collection chest contains surplus funds of Khatat and Asham offerings, they are used to buy Ola offerings based on this rule. Therefore, Kohanim also benefit from an offering bought with the surplus Asham funds just as they do from an actual Asham offering. Now, the benefits are not identical, however, for the Kohanim may eat the meat of an Asham offering itself, but they receive only the hides of an offering purchased with its surplus funds. Although the Pasuk explicitly mentions only an Asham, the extra phrase for that which he has become guilty teaches but the surplus funds of Khatat offerings are treated the same as those of Asham offerings. When we say, Ashom Asham la Hashem, for that which he has, right, Ashom, for that which he has become guilty. That teaches us that the surplus funds of Khatat offerings are treated the same as those of Asham offerings. Now, the source that it was Yoyadad the Kuen Gadol who presented the above explanation is now the Mishnah's conclusion. Vomer. And this is as the Pasuk says regarding the innovations of Yoyada. Kesef Asham the Kesef Chataot Lo Yuva Bet Adonai Lakonim Yihu Asham money and Chatat money shall not be brought to the temple of Hashem; they shall be to the Kohanim. Now Yoyada surely would not have given to the Kohanim money that had been designated to buy a Chatat or Asham, which must obviously be used to buy the offerings. Rather, he must have given them some rights to the surplus funds of such offerings, namely that they received the hides of communal Ola offerings purchased with those funds. So this proves that it was Yoyada that first made this drasha that surplus Chatat and Asham funds are used to purchase Ola offerings. And that is in the Rabotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Amen v'amen.